exciting. We're going to talk about Breeders' Cup Classic already. Uh, we got a win in your end this weekend and a lot to talk about with your Breeders' Cup Classic fair odds. Yeah, this always feels like a, a turn a turn in the page or a, a turn on the golf course heading to the uh, heading back to the clubhouse with the Triple Crown over and a classic win in your in race this weekend with the Stephen Foster. But the horse I think is the most likely winner of the classic at this point is in neither of those buckets. Speaking of Met Mile winner Cody's Wish, who still has to prove he can go two turns. And what do you think about Cody's Wish going two turns or going a mile and a quarter? Uh, it's a big question mark, a legitimate one. Now, breeding wise, by curling out of a tap at mare doesn't appear there'd be any issue there. Of course, everyone wondering, well, why wouldn't have Bill Mott tried up to this point? Now, he won the two turn dirt mile in the Breeders' Cup last year, so somewhat positive. His only one and one eighth mile try was uh, a dud, relatively speaking, to his, his other starts. So, those are the negatives. The positives for me, Mark, are he took a while to get going anyway. He needed several starts to break his maiden before he finally found the confidence and then erupted. And Bill Mott, definitely known as someone who can develop horses, bring them along, make the necessary changes. He still had cigar on turf, even in his first few starts with the barn, finally found a home on dirt. I just think Cody's wish is the type who needs his time taken. He's developed. We'll see what happens. They're, they're talking about a nine for a long race at Saratoga. Obviously, that'll be make or break, whether he goes on to the classic or back to the dirt mile. Okay, awesome. So Cody's wish is your favorite. Now I got to ask you, are you on the bandwagon finally? Or are you still <laughs> off the bandwagon? <laughs> um, <laughs> well done. I, I'm on the bandwagon. Uh, you know, my excuse for not liking him in the Derby isn't talent related. It's I bought into the two-year-old thing with Apollo and justified just thought it was too much too soon. And he proved that wrong. And I thought the top, really the top several from the Derby, I, I think can all come back and make some noise. We've already seen two fills, unfortunately since retired, but we did see him come back and, and run a very fast race in the Ohio Derby. We've seen disarm come back angel of empire. I'm not sure wanted a mile and a half, but I mean, he hit the Super and the Belmont from the Derby. So I think this is a good group. And I think Mage, a lot of people say two fills ran the best Derby. Maybe co-best if you want to say that. But I thought Mage was spectacular. Javier, yes, kept him out of trouble. But he still needed to accelerate when others did not to his level. And he was a clear winner inside the 16th pole. So for me, he's the top three-year-old right now. And they're going to have to come catch him. So I'm on the bandwagon, especially if he's going to be third or fourth choice in a race like this. There you go. Yeah, and it, he ran a great race in the Derby. Obviously, either he or two fills ran the best. I think Angel of Empire just kind of did some running at the end. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see where Mage goes the rest of the year in terms of development, in terms of running style. And, you know, is he going to continue to break slow and come from off it or, or need a pace set up, as some people have suggested? All right. So let's move past Mage. Let's talk about another three year three year old Archangelo. Uh, this one, I wouldn't say I'm on the bandwagon with this one, only because there's only so many bandwagons you can be on. But, you know, the, the facts are, from a, a speed rating standpoint, he certainly stacks up. Now, the Belmont, to me, is a totally different animal than a race like the Breeders' Cup Classic or even the Derby. I think brilliance is more rewarded at a mile and a quarter versus a mile and a half. So still some... Uh, proving it at a grade one level, but the Peter Pan certainly augurs well for that argument. And, you know, it all comes down to price as it should. If he's longer than a horse like Forte, certainly going to prefer Archangelo. But if he were to win out, maybe there's still some question marks against older. Well, he'd be an underlay come November, but he's in the mix for sure. Yeah. And I thought his Belmont was great. Um, mile and a quarter should work. And I think this is a horse that's still developing. Um, in some ways, I think you might have less question marks than Mage. Um, so uh, I think, you know, definitely firmly in the mix in, in terms of the cost. Who, who would you ride if you were Javier? That's a really tough question. I think that, I think, you know, they'll sort themselves out. And then, of course, you know, will both of these horses or, you know, how many of these horses will make it to the Classic? Um, I, I think Arcangelo is, is right there right now. I might actually prefer him. Sure. No, um, he's I, hard to deny. Yeah, it, it, very impressive race. He did, you know, got a really nice ride in the Belmont, nice rail trip and all that. So, all right, so let's move on. Let's talk about some of the olders. Uh, we've got the Stephen Foster. We've got 
uh, rattle and roll. We've got, uh, uh, you know, what, what West will power. We've got happy smile in there. You know, what are we thinking about that race? Uh, well, from a Stephen Foster perspective, West willpower, especially the way Ellis has played, uh, definitely looks to have an advantage there. So maybe he gets the automatic berth. And when my fair odds come out for that race, you'll see I do think he's the most likely winner. But of course, that doesn't mean that he's more likely than the others in that race in the actual Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, so that's always an interesting balance as a handicapper. I really like Proxy. Uh, I'm still waiting for that. I don't even know if he needs to take another step forward, but I thought that from what we've seen of his best, I definitely think against his peers, that would be good enough come Breeders' Cup Classic Day. So I, I would say I'm most excited about him. The, the two McPeaks certainly are both interesting, and I really love their consistency as older horses. But from a standpoint of which horse do I think has run the best race, that I've seen that actually could win the classic. If he runs back to it, it's proxy for me. Okay. That makes sense. I would agree with that. And I would also say, you know, like rattle and roll, he's already been kind of campaigned a lot this early this year. <laughs> a lot of times those horses don't usually keep that form or bring that form back for the fall. So we'll have to see how long you can keep that form going. All right. So let's talk about the Bafferts. I thought this was interesting. You've got Taba at 12 to one and Arabian night getting a mile and a quarter at 15 to one. Yeah, uh, and Arabian Lions in there too, and defunded. I mean, Baffert, uh, you know, is expected has a, a decent hand. The reason I prefer Taba to, of the whole group, uh, and it's sort of the the same thought process with Proxy for me, is I think the best we've seen from Taba uh, certainly, you know, come Breeders' Cup, especially it being at Santa Anita Park. Uh, I, I think is the best of the Bafferts. Now, Arabian Knight still probably has some upside, and Arabian Lion has distance questions, but they've also shown races that would probably be good enough. So I would say even though Baffert's one of the most known names and we know what he's capable of, the horses in his barn have some of the biggest question marks. So I didn't want to go too high on him because that sets you up for disaster with Bob. And I, I've learned that the hard way with horses like Justify. Uh, but certainly I wouldn't say any of them belong among the top five at this point. Yeah. And and you hit on, I mean, Defunded, I thought – I thought that horse at 30 to one was a little interesting with what he's done against older, um, maybe a little stronger consideration right now. Yeah, that that's fair. Uh, you know, I, I've just kind of thought, you know, and I'm, I'm a big speed as class standpoint, so I, I don't want to hold the class too much against him. But I would say of all the horses we've talked about, he's probably running in some of the races that, you know, maybe would not hold up as well as the field, albeit at a mile. Cody's wish has been against. I think this week weekend's Foster is really strong. I don't know that Defunded seen that type of group before. So I did have class in my mind when I made him 30 to 1. But, you know, as, as the summer racing rolls on, could definitely see him chipping away at that. Okay. And then you've got a couple of uh, foreign runners in here. I don't How do I say? Ushba Tesoro from Japan, <laughs> I assume. I'm not familiar with him. And then August Rodan. Uh, what's the scoop on those two? Yeah, you know, they're the two that have the shortest prices of the international-based horses in some of the international markets. So, I, you know, I thought spice it up a little bit. Uh, the, the former is a Dubai World Cup winner, so obviously that's going to merit some respect. He's done it on dirt. Uh, and the latter, we know Aiden O'Brien's willing to take a shot occasionally with his top turf runners in the Classic. It hasn't come close to working out. Uh, but you know, at, at 51 to 1, you know, I kind of thought, well, if, if they ended up committing, A, be a lot shorter than that come race day, which is a long way away. But B, uh, you know, I, I do think when they do commit, they're, they're there to try to shock the world and create a, stall a multi-surface stallion. So there's precedent for them trying it and, you know, thought it merited an inclusion off the Epsom Derby win. Okay. And then a couple other interesting ones. Art Collector, obviously, you know, ran that huge race in the Pegasus. Uh, how, how do you see him fitting in the mix? Yeah, he's he's one that's uh, sort of to fooled me before, and I've been on him at the right time. Uh, it's, it's been a while, though. When, when he was with Tommy, I, I caught a couple good ones and then I uh, don't want to say gave up on him, but thought others were better in other spots. And the Pegasus, you know, back to Bill Mott with Cody's Wish. I mean, the way he's able to to get these horses uh, in the right spot and to, to run their race is why he's in the Hall of Fame and one of the best ever. And I think we saw that with the Pegasus. And for me, there's no reason to think it, it can't be done again in the classic. So he's not impossible I do think if, you know, many of the others we talk about are on their best come November 4th, 5th, 
first Saturday in November uh, that our collector might be a touch below them. Uh, but we've seen Mott can get them ready for the big races. And, you know, I think our collector sort of in that bucket. Yeah, I mean, his Pegasus was dynamite. And then lastly, uh, Tapa Trice, we have any hope that he <laughs> continues to develop here? Yeah, uh, you know, after the Triple Crown, a couple disappointments. I, you know, I was on him in, in both races, ran it back, and the Derby was bad. Uh, the, the Belmont was a little better, but, you know, he made that move and totally flattened out. So whether it was the mile and a half or, or just the, the campaign, we'll see. So based off those two, uh, he absolutely 100% needs to improve to even be in the mix. Uh, but given the the pedigree uh, and given, you know, what it would mean as, as a stallion prospect to be three-year-old champion, beat older, get that grade one, uh, I think Pletcher's going to give him every chance. So I, I'm not giving up on him from the standpoint that I, I think he's, you know, still kind of around, but certainly he's moved to an outsider in my mind. Yeah, and 51 makes sense. Um, but uh, obviously, as we know, with three-year-olds, uh, they can develop all very quickly over over a few months so uh thanks for putting this line together very yeah, 20 contenders for breeders cup classic